Uh, we're going to close the morning session uh, with a talk by Dr. Jen Rowe, and Dr. Jen Rowe is at Genentech doing breast cancer research. Thank you, Katie, for the introduction, and I also want to extend my thanks um, to Dean Gould and the Brett office, as well as the organizing committee, really for providing me, I think, this very unique opportunity uh, to take part in this symposium. Um, and so what I would like to do is, is I know I was asked to provide a single slide and talk through a single slide, so I broke with that protocol. <laughs> so I have two slides. Uh, and so the first um, part of my presentation is really going to just focus on, on providing you with a snapshot regarding what clinical scientists do. And so I'm going to try to give you a point of view of, of what I do each day and what, what my responsibilities are. I'm going to need some guidance here. Oh, okay. Oops, no. That's not it. It should be this left button. Okay, great. So what do I do? Um, and I think I can put this into three general buckets. And the first bucket is to work on clinical strategy. And I would represent a member of a multidisciplinary team that would involve all of the functions that are described uh, up on that first bullet point that includes representatives in clinical as well as folks in statistics, safety, regulatory, our research organization, operations, diagnostics, commercial, and a few others. And, and the goal of this clinical strategy group is really to put together a clinical develop development plan for a specific molecule that's in our portfolio. And what is contained within this CDP is a defined list of indications, clinical studies, timelines, and criteria for no, for go and no go decisions, really to graduate a molecule along the drug development process. This and uh, CDPs are quite interesting, and, and they're they're extremely dynamic roadmaps that um, that really need to be amended and changed depending upon the, the landscape that um, exists at the time. So for instance, uh, one obvious change in the drug development landscape, of course, would be the approval of a new agent, a novel agent that happens to be um, in an indication that you've been working on for a couple of years. And that can certainly throw a wrench in your clinical development plans and the team, of course, will, will have to scramble and, and um, define uh, and, and update the clinical development plan. So that's part of the strategy. I think, but what I wanted to spend most of the time sharing with you is, is what I spend the vast majority of my time doing, which is, is being someone who is really the boots on the ground to execute pieces of the clinical development plan. And that's really running the clinical studies. Um, and I think you'll hear um, a similar message from Stephanie a little bit later on this afternoon. Um, and this involves really taking a clinical development trial concept and leading that concept to fruition to the study outcome. And so for each clinical study, it's important for the clinical development team to define, as you would imagine, the line of therapy, the combination partner, the patient population, and the endpoints. And this is true for, um, for all phases of clinical trial design. And what I've tried to very simplistically um, represent here is an event diagram, an event timeline that, that highlights some of the activities that I would be involved in, depending upon where the project exists. And so at the time when an, an initial project, a trial concept is, um, is conceived, it requires a fair amount of work corralling the internal stakeholders that represent all of the functions that's highlighted in the first bullet point. And the major stakeholders really at this time are, are clinical, regulatory, and biostatistics, um, really to develop develop a, a clinical trial concept. Then we tend to go out and pressure test these ideas in the clinical trial um, with external advisors. And, and these are typically key opinion leaders, academic um, investigators um, that are at institutions like Vanderbilt um, who we bounce these ideas off of. So what, once we have what appears to be a gelled concept that exists in the form of um, a nascent protocol, uh, we take this uh, protocol to our internal governance board where we're required to present 
kind of the, the study design to get approval on exactly what we'll be addressing, what the study will entail. And then we have to get sign off from the scientific committee as well as, of course, the finance committee to pay for the study. For some studies, it requires interactions with health authorities. And this is certainly true for first and phase human studies, where we need to have approval from the health authorities before going forward and putting an investigative agent in the clinic. And also, it's a pretty good idea to talk to the health authorities before you launch a large phase three, registrational phase three study. So we, we'll go and have, we'll, we'll have communications with the health authorities and take their feedback and eventually come to a, a protocol that is finalized. And it's the clinical scientist um, who's responsible for authoring that and, again, who is the primary point person for most of those functions, save for the interaction with the health authorities, which is controlled by a regulatory, a regulatory group. So once the protocol is finalized, then it gets shot out to the sites. And the sites represent the clinical investigational sites. And depending upon the size of the study, that could represent two or three for a small study. Um, there are some studies that I'm working on right now that have over 150 studies, uh, uh, investigational sites. And so our responsibility is to, um, pretty simple at this stage. You have investigators that may not have worked with the compound that you've been spending a lot of time developing, and they may not be really familiar with the protocol, and so you're tasked with, with training both the study investigator as well as the site. Uh, and that can fall into two general flavors. If it, again, if it's a small study, it's not unusual to go out to the study site to train the, the investigator and the staff. Uh, alternatively, for some of the larger studies, we have investigator meetings where we're responsible for that type of training, um, and it's not unusual for you know, 40 or 50 of the investigators to attend these meetings, and again, depending upon the size of the study, it's, it's quite possible and actually quite likely that you'll become a 1K member on your favorite um, airline. Uh, then once the study's running, the clinical scientist specialist is involved in really the management of the clinical data. And so the data is entered from, from the clinical sites into a centralized database, and our job is to go through the data to, to, um, to examine its accuracy and to make sure that the data is clean as possible. In addition to cleaning the data and data cleaning activities, um, we're responsible for the data analysis, which you can imagine can include all pieces of a clinical study. These can be very complex designs and would have very complex endpoints that include, of course, safety and efficacy. But that also includes uh, working with team members to assess biomarkers as well as pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic readouts. And so um, it's, it may, the, the study is, is a huge um, kind of marriage of, of these very different specialties and it's really the clinical scientist who will kind of serve as the pivot point for many of those functions. Um, and the, the, the clinical scientist always also serves as the site support and so we're typically the first person the site contacts when an unusual adverse event happens. We're the, the, also the first uh, group where um, if there's a question that comes up regarding the protocol, uh, questions regarding the protocol and process, we're the ones that are fielding those calls and interacting with the sites. Um, and once you enroll your last patient and the endpoint is hit, um, you celebrate and you have um, a publication which is in the form of a, a clinical study report or some other publication that may be in, uh, um, contributed to an ASCO publication or, uh, or a journal publication. Um, in, but those are the, the endpoints eventually from the company perspective. They're there to drive clear go-no.